this is Maraj Patel and today we're going to be going over some the first videos about chemistry and we're going to be over going over unit 1 and the first powerpoint today we'll be talking about is about the scientific process and so uh, the first question is what is science well science is a way of knowing based off of testable claims supported by experiments and observations and so that's important because science has to be proven and what is not science is not proven by observations or experiment experiments or it can't be proven empirically and examples are religion feeling, authority, and emotion, because you can't prove those with observations or experiments. And the next question is, what is chemistry? And before we define it, so in the universe there's all sorts of stuff, and the building blocks are atoms, and the atoms m come together and make stuff or matter. And so chemistry is the study of matter and how it changes, and uh, it all has to do with the atoms, molecules, and reactions, chemical reactions. And I'm sure all of you know about the scientific process from those pesky science fairs in middle school. And I know everyone remembers the, that time when we had to do those annoying science fair projects. And so science is a logical, organized way to solve a problem. And so uh, as the scientific process has about five steps. And the first part is to ask a question. So you need a question to make your experiment. And then observations or to observe. So you can do some research and... Um, and then uh, after observing or doing some research, you can make a hypothesis or a possible answer to the, to the uh, question. Then you need to perform an experiment to test it or observe. And then afterwards, you can reach a conclusion and establish a theory. And the first step is observation using your senses to obtain information and you would first use observations to base a question and so in this scenario if you f saw a flashlight and it wasn't working so there's some observation right there you didn't see the light bulb turn on and so you ask a question why is it not working so that would be your observation and question and see that's a question you've asked what is wrong with the flashlight and then we'd have to make a hypothesis or a possible explanation or answer to the question what is wrong with the flashlight and we would have to use experiments to test the hypothesis so for example you could try putting in batteries and see if that works and if it doesn't work then it didn't work out and so you'd have to try a new experiment to test other other uh, possible uh, problems and so an experiment is used to test the hypothesis and there's three types of variables independent variable dependent variable and controls independent variable is what you change dependent variable is what you observe or measure and the good way to remember this is think about it depends on what you change and the controls are all the other variables that are kept constant and it's important to only change one variable so you know that that one variable is causing the whole change and um, so an application would be like medicine so like if a doctor prescribes three types of pills to treat one problem and it works but how would the doctor know which of the three pills worked well you can't because there's there's three of them if there was only one pill at a time then you then the doctor would know that that only that one pill affected the change and so that is why it's important to only have one variable in experiment and once a hypothesis 
is supported by experimentation, then it can become a theory. And it's always important in science for the data to be replicable. So that means that other scientists can also perform the experiment as same as you do, so they know they can trust you and know that you're not, you know, fudging the results. And so a theory is a well-tested explanation for a set of observations. So a theory may need to be revised once you find new observations or you perform new experiments. So, for example, if you uh, had plants and you're trying to find the optimal, uh, optimal fertilizer, we found this one fertilizer out of all these, and then you do s mo more tests with the fertilizers and find even more, you would have to add that to your um, theory, and that's how it can be revised. And I know that theories and laws are always confused, but they're to totally different things. And so a scientific theory, back to this definition, is a well-tested explanation for a set of observations. A scientific law pretty much just summarizes the results of many observations. And... Uh, Scientific laws, yeah, see, they don't explain, and they're often like math formulas. So, for example, you could do the law of gravity versus the theory of gravity. The law of gravity summarizes and predicts while the theory explains and interprets. And I'll go more into that on the next slide. And it's always important to know that theories and lo laws are not really related so theories can't become laws and laws can become theories it's they're just two totally different things and so here is a comparison the definitions is a a theory is a well-tested explanation so and so for example you'd make a hypothesis repeat testing make a theory and explain it thoroughly a scientific law summarizes as a result of many observation experiments and it's often a form it has to do with formulas and equations. For example, a um, for example um, down here is the theory of gravity versus law of gravity. See the law of gravity has a formula here, and um, so this pretty much just summarizes the formula and it just predicts. And the theory of gravity explains it thoroughly and uh, is very complicated. And remember, theories cannot be rev uh, can be revised to uh, to explain new observations, and they can't. Once again, theories do not become laws. Laws do not become theories. And same thing. And here's another little illustration of the scientific process. So first, you have observations, or you have a question, using and then use observations to develop a hypothesis or a possible outcome of the experiment. And if, uh, then if the experiment goes well, then you can make a theory or a conclusion, which explains. Or it can turn into a law if it has like some formulas involved. And the reason why there's errors going back and forth is if the experiment doesn't m prove your hypothesis, you have to re redo the hypothesis, redesign an experiment. And same thing, experiments can lead to theories, which also can be revised. And a scientific fact is a close agreement among a bunch of scientists because it's like replicable, which means that other scientists can also prove it. And here's another illustration of the scientific process. And so first you have observations, then you have a hypothesis, possible outcome of the experiment. And here you have an experiment, reach conclusions if it goes right. Otherwise, you have to revise the hypothesis, and conclusions can turn to theories or laws based off of if they have, uh, if they're just explaining or just predicting or summary. And here, theories can be revised over more experimentation. And here's a quick quiz to see what you learned, and so just follow along and and have an answer in your head and I'll go over why it's correct or uh, which answers are not correct and so knowledge would not be considered scientific knowledge if a it's based on experimental data b it's theoretical c it's not observable or testable 
and D, it is easy to understand. So remember, science has to come from observations or knowledge. So it can't be A because it has experiment. It Science is based off of experiments or observations. And uh, it can't, it doesn't necessarily have to be easy to understand. And theoretical would be just like calculating, which still would be considered science. So the answer must be C because this is exactly what science isn't. Not observable and testable. That is not science at all. Like religion and emotions, stuff like that. Here's a second question. Chemistry is a study of blank and how it reacts. Anything with mass, anything that takes up space, matter, or all of the above. Well, let me remind you that anything that with mass and anything that takes up space is matter. So because these two define matter, uh, the answer is all of the above because all these are matter and chemistry is all about how building blocks or the stuff reacts and changes. And what is a hypothesis? Information obtained from the senses, a proposed explanation for observations, C, a thoroughly tested explanation for a broad set of observations, or D, a concise say, statement that summarizes the results of many experiments. So before we answer this question, let's just identify each of these answers. A, information obtained from the senses. What does that sound like? Sounds like observations. And uh, what does C sound like? A thoroughly tested explanation for a broad set of observations. It says thoroughly tested explanation. So that would be a theory. And what is D? A concise statement that summarizes the results of many experiments. That sounds more like a scientific law. So the answer would be B. A proposed explanation for an observation. And see, that's an observation, a theory, and a law. And what are the two steps in the process of science? A, ask questions and make up answers. B, observe an experiment. C, ask a question and propose a theory. D, test a hypothesis and prove it's true. Well, the answer is B because the whole point of science is to observe a problem and experiment to solve the problem. And everything must be proven uh, empirically in science. And that is all for today. Thank you for listening to my video. I will have more videos about Unit 1 in um, about density and scientific notation. And I hope that was helpful and I hope you have a good day.